Well, this is Josie McDaniel Burkett again. We're glad to have you back. It's good to see you. Mm -hmm. Y'all, thank you for coming. We got. To have to get really tight. <clears throat> we barely have enough room here for all the people involved in the decision making, and this this isn't everybody. Come on in. Put that tall man back. <laughs> tall. Do we get to make a funny face with you? <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Well, y'all welcome, and we'll have answers for all your questions. We'll start with John Quirello, National Weather Service. John, Thank you, Governor. Good afternoon. Uh, Hurricane Florence is expected to be a long-duration, high-impact event for much of South Carolina, including areas well inland from the coast. A hurricane watch and storm surge watch remain in effect from Edisto Beach north to South Santee River, and the watches were upgraded to warnings farther north beyond the North Carolina-South Carolina, South Carolina uh, state line earlier this morning. Florence has weakened only slightly to a Category 3 hurricane with speeds of 125 miles an hour. Uh, it's still located 470 miles east-southeast of Myrtle Beach, and it's moving west-northwest at 16 miles per hour. Uh, Florence is expected to slow down or stall as it approaches the southeastern North Carolina coast as a major hurricane on Friday and linger near the northern South Carolina coast into Saturday while weakening. This will result in a long period of damaging wind, storm surge inundation, and flooding rainfall across the northeast part of the state. The forecast track of Florence has shifted farther south into South Carolina since yesterday and is now expected to shift inland and track across South Carolina through the weekend and into the beginning of next week. Since Florence is a large hurricane, outer bands could begin to reach portions of the Grand Strand Thursday with tropical storm force winds beginning Thursday evening and potential hurricane force winds Friday night. Tropical storm force winds could reach the southern part of the coast and even uh, inland across the Midlands during the day on Friday. Damaging winds could spread inland across much of the state resulting in down trees and power outages. Uh, storm surge values could reach six to nine feet above ground level in some locations north of Myrtle Beach, four to six feet above ground level in some locations from North Myrtle Beach to South Santee River, and two to four feet above ground level in some locations from South Santee River to Edisto Beach. Uh, periods of heavy rainfall are possible Friday through at least Monday. Rainfall amounts are currently forecast to range from 10 to 15 inches in far northeast portions of the state, 6 to 10 inches across the northern Midlands, and 2 to 6 inches across the rest of the state. Locally higher amounts could be, uh, excuse me, locally amounts could be much higher than that, resulting in dangerous flash flooding. Uh, these rainfall amounts will also result in significant river flooding, especially in the PD basin through next week. Um, while the latest track could result in an extended period of damaging wind, storm surge, and flooding, the good news is that the slower approach still provides an opportunity for residents in evacuation zones to leave and others across the state to complete their preparations. Thank you, Governor. Thank you. And as you said, it, it is slowing down. That is the speed at which the hurricane is approaching our coast, and North Carolina is slowing down, and the velocity of the hurricane has slowed a little bit. <clears throat> but it could pick back up, and as we have been predicting, this hurricane is unpredictable. It, it seems to change a little bit here and there. It's uh, making predictions uh, very difficult, but with all the information we're getting from around the world on this hurricane, I can assure you that the, what we are telling you here is the very best information available. Point number one, <clears throat> if you are in an evacuation zone, and those you can see them by going to the, the website. If you are in one of those evacuation zones in these counties, you need to leave now. Those zones are in Charleston County, Georgetown County, jo Dorchester County, Horry County, and Berkeley County. You can go and see on the maps there if you are in the zone. And if you're in one of those zones, then the, you must evacuate. 300,000 plus people already have done it. And as you can see, the, the highways are moving smoothly. Uh, the re lane reversals are working very well, and we're getting people out of harm's way. <clears throat> once that hurricane hits, once those high winds get here, whether it's Thursday night or sometime Friday morning, once, it, once they get here, it will be very difficult, if not impossible, for anybody to come rescue you if you are in harm's way in one of those zones. 
be very difficult. In fact, we'll start pulling all of the assets out of there at some time because even the rescuers cannot stay there and fight what is, what is coming. At this time, I have not ordered an evacuation for Jasper, Beaufort, and Colleton counties in their zones there. I have not ordered that at this time. But as Sheriff Tanner and others, and Mr. B uh, Mayor Kaiserling and other officials there and other county officers have said, if you are in an area that usually floods, if you are in a low-lying area, even if you are not in an evacuation zone, or you are in one of those counties in an evacuation zone where the order has not been given to evacuate, leave. Go ahead and leave and go to find high ground because you may be in danger. This is a big, big storm. Finally, there's going to be a lot of heavy rain with this hurricane. We know that. This is something that is unusual about this hurricane. This hurricane is bringing some rain and water that we have not seen before in hurricanes. We've seen high winds, notably with Hugo. These winds may be that high as well, but this will likely be more rain than we saw with Hugo or other hurricanes. And that is because, as has been explained, when this hurricane gets to land, it is liable to stop there, to continue its flow of rain on us, but to move very slowly and may even come down the South Carolina coast. So we will have water coming down the rivers from North Carolina for the heavy rain there as well is in our South Carolina rivers and streams. So be aware, if you're in a low-lying area, be aware, and we'll be all on the lookout for major flooding. So with that, General Livingston. Thank you, Governor. Uh, Team South Carolina continues to support the evacuation area uh, uh, efforts of our citizens. Uh, we are poised and continuing to shift assets. The governor's orders allows us to shift assets throughout the state to be prepared after the storm uh, for search and rescue, uh, further evacuation, security, and clearing of routes. Uh, we have coordinated with our neighbors to the south to get uh, further assets into South Carolina if needed, and we're coordinating with North Carolina and Virginia to uh, co have uh, coordinated responses uh, to the storm. Uh, we have federal military assets available. The fact is uh, we'll actually have a uh, helicopter uh, carrier and a littorial ship uh, after the storm that's available to help us. Uh, so assets uh, are, are there uh, and uh, we'll be prepared to deploy them uh, to support the citizens of South Carolina. One question, General, is this the first time we've had those ships offshore? Yes, Governor, this is the first time we've had those ships offshore and, and it's, a, it's a great asset. Uh, uh, we appreciate the President uh, providing that and uh, we are, have tight coordination so that uh, when those assets are used, uh, they will be uh, properly used and effectively used. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Governor. Secretary Hall. Excuse me, Thank you. Thank you, Governor. Just a quick update on our traffic flows. Uh, currently, we're still seeing very high traffic volumes coming out of the Myrtle Beach and Georgetown area. Roughly two to four times normal volumes uh, on our highways coming out of that particular uh, section of the state in the PD area. And then with regards to Charleston, we're seeing coming out of the Charleston region, we're seeing about 1.5 times our normal volumes uh, coming up out of I-26 out of the Charleston region. Governor, that concludes my report. Thank you, ma'am. Rick Smith. Thank you, Governor. Leroy Smith, South Carolina Department of Public Safety. Uh, our I-26 and U.S. 501 lane reversal routes are operating uh, very well. Uh, however, we did have two minor collisions on the reverted side of uh, I-26. Uh, one minor collision in Orangeburg and one minor collision in Columbia. Uh, our local evacuation evacuation routes are uh, operating well. Uh, we have uh, pre-positioned uh, our units, uh, officers, uh, in the uh, Beaufort County area uh, waiting for uh, any type of uh, uh, influx of traffic affecting US 21 and US 278 to keep that traffic flowing in that area. Uh, our plan is to terminate uh, lane reversal routes uh, before the onset of tropical storm force winds. Uh, so for the uh, I-26 corridor, uh, the plan, uh, the tentative plan is to uh, 
uh, close that reverse route on uh, s tomorrow at 6 p.m. Uh, that means that if you are in front of the uh, trooper's vehicle at 6 p.m., you will have the opportunity to continue to the Columbia uh, area. And as far as US 501, we will close that reverted side at 12 noon, meaning that if you are in front of the trooper vehicle once uh, that reverse flushing uh, process starts, you can continue throughout the 30-mile uh, route. Thank you. That's 12 noon what day? Tomorrow. Thank 12 you. noon tomorrow. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, one question, Secretary Hall, the condition on uh, I-20 near Bishopville, could you address that briefly? Yes, sir. Please? Thank you, Governor. As you know, we have a uh, bridge project that's underway on I-20 at about um, at Bishopville area. And uh, so we've been monitoring that uh, delay going through that area as part of the evacuation plan. We've seen about a 30-minute delay on uh, pretty, pretty steady, about a five to six mile uh, congested area on that section. So we've been working with the local law enforcement and Department of Public Safety to look to implement some uh, a new plan to try to uh, affect that merge area in a more efficient manner to try to get traffic moving through that area. Thank you very much. Director Keel, excuse me, Chief Keel, SLED. Thank you, Governor. Chief Keel, uh, SLED, I uh, just want to let you know that there are 450 state law enforcement officers that have been deployed to our coastal regions. Those officers right now are participating in uh, traffic re lane reversals and the evacuation process. They will be transitioning to a security uh, job as far as soon as the uh, post storm. Uh, again, as I said the other day, it's not the time for individuals to take advantage of those who have evacuated their homes and their businesses. Our officers will be out in force along with our local law enforcement community to see that those are not those individuals who have evacuated those areas are not taken advantage of. Thank you. Thank you, Director Wilson. D. Heck. Thank you, Governor. Uh, D. Heck continues to perform pre-storm assessments of dams across the state. As of this morning, we had done 181 of those. I would encourage uh, dam owners, whether it's a state-regulated dam or not, that while the weather is, is still good, to take steps to lower the water level in their ponds or their reservoirs uh, to, in anticipation of the heavy rains. Also inspect spillways and emergency spillways to make sure they're clear of debris. We are helping with the evacuation and uh, assessing the evacuation of health care facilities in the evacuation zones, and we now have three special medical needs shelters needed and are ready to staff additional ones as needed. Thank you, Governor. Thank you very much. Ms. Meacham? Yes, sir. DSS? Yes, sir. Thank, Thank you, ma'am. An update on the shelter situation. As of 2.15, we had 34 shelters that are open with a capacity of 35,000. Currently, there are 1,800 people across South Carolina in shelters. There are 19 additional shelters on standby that would increase our capacity by an additional 33,000. We currently have three shelters that are accepting pets. Those are Cane Bay High School in Berkeley, Lake Marion High in Orangeburg, and DeBose Middle in Dorchester. The full live list of shelter openings is on the SEMD.org or on the mobile app. If you are going to a shelter, you will need to take blankets, pillows, comfort items, medicines if you have any chronic conditions such as high blood pressure or diabetes, important identification documents, and any special food restrictions if you have small children or if you are on a restricted diet. Also, on the website now, there's a green paw you can go to to see if the shelter is pet friendly. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Director Parrish, Parks, Recreation, and Tourism. Thank you, Governor. Um, all state parks along the coast are now closed with the exception of Hunting Island and Buford County. For those in the evacuation zones seeking overnight accommodations, um, it is very fluid um, and could become very spotty. I would encourage you to check Hotel Brands websites or online travel agent sites such as Expedia or Travelocity or Airbnb.com along those lines for short-term rentals as well for availability before and possibly even calling the hotel just to confirm your reservation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Director Emily Farr, Labor Licensing and Regulation. Thank you, Governor. Thank you. 
Um, the State Fire Division of the Department of Labor Licensing and Regulation has been coordinating the planning and preparation of search and rescue resources over the last few days. We now have about 750 rescue personnel rostered and ready to respond to this storm. That personnel consists of teams of in-state firefighter rescue personnel, as well as we have several teams from the states of Tennessee and Louisiana that have responded to South Carolina to help with this storm, and uh, teams from FEMA stationed here in, um, in Columbia um, to respond to the storm if needed. All of these are prepared for swift water and other search and rescue missions that may um, be necessary. And as in addition to all of your local firefighters that have stayed to help with their home bases, with their local jurisdictions through the storm. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, ma'am. Kim Stimson. Thank you, sir. Um, the SEAC is fully operational here at, uh, with full state agency staffing. We've got really the state emergency response team has three priorities right now. One is the ongoing evacuation and sheltering mission. And then uh, we'll go into the initial response uh, and then eventually re-entry and initial damage assessment. But we're also planning for potential flood uh, fighting operations here in the near term as well. Uh, in terms of counties, uh, the emergency operations centers are open in uh, in 14 counties right now. Their primary focus is similar. It's the evacuation and sheltering piece uh, that's going on. We uh, have 10 of our personnel uh, from EMD deployed and embedded in the emergency operations centers at 10 counties, uh, the co all the coastal counties, and then two of the inland counties to maintain situational awareness and also provide uh, expertise and assistance to, the, uh, to those local authorities. We continue to work requests from the local authorities uh, and they're ranging from ambulances to buses to generators. Uh, we continue to uh, work with uh, bringing in additional assets from out of state and potentially uh, FEMA as well. On the public information side, we continue to emphasize personal preparedness and uh, through the social media uh, uh, part of it. We want to remind everybody that uh, we've got the public information phone system at one 246 246 and they'll answer any uh, evacuation, uh, sheltering issues that you might have, uh, any questions there or any other questions that you might have. Also remind everybody that they can go to our website at scemd.org and you can go to Know Your Zone and find out if you're actually in a zone by uh, actually just uh, typing in your address and you'll It'll, it'll show you where you're at in terms of that. It's also available on our South Carolina Emergency Manager, Manager app that's on, that can be downloaded and installed on your cell phone. Sir? Thank you very much. Colonel Taylor, DNR. Thank you, Governor. I want to take a moment to shift. We've talked a lot about our highways and evacuations and shift to our waterways for a second. With the shift in the storm, as the governor said, it's been very unpredictable as we've moved forward and planned for this storm activity. But with the shift of that storm, we now know that we're going to have potential of excess rain across our state, 10 inches plus over most of the state. So we're now in the process of planning before the storm even gets here on how we're going to respond to communities if we have flood situations. Uh, we'll be working with our state partners and to, to put plans together. Those plans are in place now. We'll be planning. Uh, flood mapping so we can see those areas that had the potential to be flooded so that we can pre-position and be prepared to move into those areas for search and rescue for those that might be in a flood prone area and trapped by flood waters as well as security as Chief Keel stated for those folks that are in those flooded areas where they may leave their homes and we'll be there to provide security for their homes. For our boaters, I would advise you now that the storm has made a shift to South Carolina to secure your watercraft along our waterways. Now's the time to do that before the storm gets here. Also, if you're a boater and you're in a flood prone area, please refrain from joyriding. To look at the flooded areas, to look at the homes that may be flooded because the damage your wake may cause to that property could be significant. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Colonel. Uh, Jerry Edger, Probation Department and yes. Parole. Thank you, Governor. Yes, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, probation Parole and Pardon Services has about 100 agents out right now working the lane reversals with the Department of Public Safety. 
Uh, once that is completed, we will shift to our ESF 13 function, which uh, we, then we will be working with SLED uh, with providing security for the communities that need it, as well as working with Department of Natural Resources with any, any types of flood situations that, that, that may occur. And we're just one of those law enforcement partners that will be doing various uh, functions as, as needed. Thank you very much. Thank you. Department of Motor Vehicles, Colonel Sweeto. The uh, Department of Motor Vehicles is focused initially right now on answering the phones for the uh, the state with the uh, the phone information system. Uh, post landfall, our priority will be to go ahead and ensure that we can cover down on uh, insurance claims. Uh, we have two remote capabilities that we will use to go ahead and either augment uh, organizations or branch offices that do not have uh, electricity or will co-locate with the insurance. One's called a CARES vehicle. It is a community action response and emergency services vehicle. We move it in. It's a self-contained branch office to where we'll be able to get people their licenses and uh, title information so they can go ahead and provide claims. The second, we have two shark kits, which are self-contained hazard area uh, response kits, which have uh, generated power and able to go ahead and help us light up uh, DMVs that may be without power so we can continue to meet the needs of the community. Uh, I will start by there are only three of them. They don't provide as much response as we've got, but we will get all of them on out there to take as advantage of the situation as we can. Second area is the state is not uh, focused solely on response. We have a long-term commitment with regards to recovery. So the South Carolina uh, uh, Disaster Recovery Office is already looking at what it's going to do to help recover the state, having gone through two of these prior. Uh, the biggest piece is to identify the vulnerable po uh, portions of the community. Uh, primarily those in the lowest income, uh, individuals, uh, uh, elderly, and uh, those with disabilities. Uh, identify where the problems are in terms of whether or not their homes are having issues and work with the volunteers active in disaster, primarily the faith-based community, to get help to those individuals and start mudding, mucking and gutting on day one so that we can do the longer term recovery over time. Subject to your question, sir. Thank you. Uh, Ray Farmer, Department of Insurance. <coughs> Thank you, Governor. Uh, once the storm has, has passed and uh, citizens can return to their homes, uh, you need to know that the insurance industry will be out in force. They're staging already in safe places. They'll be ready to uh, meet with their customers to adjust claims. Uh, as Colonel Suedo said, we will have the appropriate insurance villages and in, in the hard hit areas where the insurance companies can gather and citizens can uh, speed up the, the claims process. Any, any citizen that has an issue with an insurance company or a question, feel free to um, uh, go on our website at doi.sc.gov. Thank you, Governor. Thank you very much. Nanette Edwards, Director of the Office of Regulatory Staff. Thank you, Governor. Um, we've been working with our field partners, uh, the Office of Regulatory Staff, um, we are aware and been, been monitoring closely the, the use of fuel for purposes of evacuation. Um, I have to say that the application known as Gas Buddy has been working very closely with us and giving us hourly updates as to as we see the, the process of people you know going to the gas pump, getting their gasoline as they evacuate. I, I would like to take a moment to ask that you take what you need for purposes of evacuation, but that you not hoard, you know, go to the gas station, fill up um, containers, um, at, because as you get down the highway towards Columbia, um, you will find gas supplies are readily available. Um, with regard to our utility partners, um, we're in good shape. They are staging, they are um, getting prepared. Uh, we have no issues there, um, and uh, I would say that um, we're in good shape. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. In, in fact, President Duke Powell was here earlier today. So there's been a lot of communication. If anyone has any questions, we'll be glad to try to answer. Yes, yes ma'am. You said 300,000 evacuees. Are those yes. cars or people? Those are people. People. And we, we're expecting a lot more, particularly now. Any official word on the Clemson and USC football games on Saturday? No. As far as rain for the Midlands, Inlands, can we compare that to 2015? Or how, what's the magnitude of the rain? We event? really don't know. We think it may even be worse. And the reason is that in those rain events in past years where we've had storms, there have been storms coming through and, 
and turning on and going up the coast are going through quickly because of the high pressure ridge they call it in in, uh, in weatherland the, the, it, there's a, a ridge there through which this storm cannot penetrate so it's going to stay right there uh, like it's up against the wall and likely to turn and come down to the south so that means whatever rain is in that hurricane is going to have a whole lot of time to rain on North Carolina and South Carolina. And as we know, a lot of the rain that goes into North Carolina ends up in rivers that flow down into South Carolina, which will increase the flow in our state. So we're expecting a lot of rain, and that typically <coughs> means a lot of flooding, even though it has been explained that uh, some of our rivers are low right now because of uh, not that much rain recently. Uh, that helps a little bit to uh, accommodate what's coming. But there's so much coming that, that uh, we know we're going to have a lot of flooding. That's why we're urging everyone to, if they've experienced flooding before, they're likely to experience it again. And no matter where you live, find someplace safe to stay. Yes, ma'am. Are there any plans in place for our inmates if things happen to take time to work? There are. We, uh, particularly, we have one uh, facility, McDougal. It's in, just, it's in just outside of Ridgeville. It's almost on the Dorchester and, and Berkeley line. Uh, but and we're in constant communication with Director Sterling. We're getting information, and the the, uh, the analysis so far is that it's a, it's towards the end of the the, the edge of the uh, one of the evacuation zones, and because of its placement and because of the types of buildings and a lot of other considerations, that it's it's safer to to stay on campus than it is to try to get off. So that's a, that is the conclusion at this time. Now, does it leave or right by Medina? Who wants to yes. come on, Jerry? Yes, it is. And, and so, are there preparations for Lever as well? Obviously, that's a high security. Uh, I have not talked with uh, Director Sterling, but I think that facility is, is pretty uh, solid, and I don't think they'll be moving Lever <coughs> at this time. Are, are any inmates being transferred, or are there select inmates being transferred? My understanding, they may have moved some inmates from one location to Turbeville, but. That, that's something I read. Was that from yeah. the facility the governor just mentioned? <clears throat> that might be, yeah, uh, to, to Turbeville, which is a more secure facility. Is that from Lever to Turbeville or McDougal? To I think McDougal. Okay. Yeah. McDougal is a level two facility, six, about 672 inmates. But again, we're in constant communication with Director Sterling and, and his office on what the best thing to do is. Governor, with the yes. possibility of this devastating and historic flooding, you just mentioned it might be worse than those 2015 floods. Why are you confident that you'll have what you need to get that done? That's It's going to be a huge response if that happens. Well, it is because we have been in touch with not only Team South Carolina, which you've seen represented here in, in these uh, briefings, but also our, our neighbors in North Carolina. We've had contact with uh, states with Mississippi, Alabama, Florida, Georgia, North Carolina, and others as well, as well as the federal government, which has done everything that we've asked them so far. Talked to Ben Carson today. We, we've, we've talked to everyone in the administration, all of the director of uh, Homeland Security. They've all uh, are, are available for further requests, and they're all very, including President Trump, and they're all very eager to see that we do not suffer any more damage in South Carolina than we have to. They want to be sure that we lose not one single life, just as we do. We don't want to take any chances with a single South Carolina life. And we have the, the full complement of the state, federal, and local authorities working together. And I, I need to say, probably in South Carolina, uh, we may be, be uh, doing uh, more uh, in a more coordinated fashion than a lot of other other states have. We've been through this a number of times. And to give you an example, our road reversal of those lanes, most states don't do that. But we have accomplished it and it's smooth as silk and that's a great credit to Team South Carolina. With that being said, lifting those evacuations yesterday, is there any concern you might have to put them back in? Or will you everything, back everything in? depends on the facts. Everything that we do, every word you hear spoken from here is based on data and factual information that is coming not only from the local officials, from the public, but from professionals literally around the world who have satellites and information that makes this a, a very uh, precise measurement, but always, as in the case of this hurricane, subject to change without notice. Was it premature to do that? No. Everything we do is based on solid facts, and we, we are uh, careful to be precise 
and to do exactly what we need to do when we need to do it. With the cone of uncertainty and all the flooding covering the entire state, are there any recommendations for where people should evacuate? Should they go outside the state at this point? They go wherever they're comfortable. They're, they're people that have relatives in other states, people who have relatives in the upstate. Uh, there may be uh, uh, people in the Midlands. Uh, just go go where where you would like to go. As Dwayne Parrish said, we've got a lot of hotel rooms uh, still available. but. Uh, the, the thing to do is get away from the storm. Uh, it, where you go to is secondary. You got to get away from what's coming because we know it's coming, we know it's going to be bad, and we know we're going to have flooding afterwards, unlike, we believe unlike that we've seen before. So we yeah. just, the, 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 the answer is be prepared. Prepare for the worst, hope for the best, and that's what we're doing. Governor, we know the roads are running smoothly uh, as could be. What about the air? Should people trying to fly out of this thing, get away from here, be concerned and, and just prepare for the I would say stay, you can get that information when you go to get your reservation. They'll have plenty of information for you on that. There are times uh, the, the Federal Aviation Administration as well as others take care of those things. Yes, sir. Governor, you said for the last couple of days that you expected a million people to evacuate. You, you're at 300,000, you had 1,800 people in shelters. Are you concerned that people aren't listening? No, sir. We know they're listening because they're moving. And uh, we know from other, other events that they're, they're moving very well. Uh, there may be as many as a million, maybe more than that. And if you count those in North Carolina, there's no telling how many there'll be and a lot of them are coming coming this way as well so it'll be a big number the important thing is we want every single person that is in one of these zones where the evacuation has been declared to get out of that zone go to safety and do it quickly because time is running out to leave at, at some point the lane reversals will will be will be reverse themselves at some point the the rescuers will not be able to rescue because they too will have to take shelter for those that find themselves in trouble, is 911 going to be the primary number to call, or are there hotlines? And there, are there are hotlines, and you've seen them. We can put it on the screen again. Uh, I would say take uh, write down a list. This is called preparedness. Write down a list of the phone numbers that you need and the people that you need to contact. Take it with you, and if you when you are leaving, let your let your friends and family know where you're going. Governor. Um, so do you anticipate or plan on ordering an evacuation of the Midlands if the storm's path uh, continues to stay on course and, and, and pass uh, through Columbia? As I've said, everything we do will be based on the facts and on the data that we receive from not only locally, from local officials, we're in constant contact. Everybody you see here is in constant contact with local officials uh, and, and local sources of information. And what we do, what we pronounce, and what we decide is based on the facts only on the facts. I want to go back. You said you've spoken to the president. What sense are you getting from him in those conversations? He wants to be sure that we're safe and that the federal establishment is at our disposal to see that not a single South Carolinian loses a life. And I know he talked to Roy Cooper and uh, Governor Northam also in Virginia, uh, among others. You have said several times you don't want a single South Carolinian to lose a life. Um, as you probably saw the protesters out there, they're using that phrase uh, sort of against you on the prisoner issue. What would be your response to them as to why prisoners, more prisoners aren't being moved? We are operating, we're making our decisions very considered, thoughtful decisions based on the facts. And the facts are, as particularly as concerns McDougal, that is the safest place for those people to be at this time. Governor, what should people, can they, should they call 911 if they don't evacuate and, and the storm does hit yes. in that spot? What what should they do specifically? What numbers can they turn to? Kim Stenson. Well, I, one of the things I, I point you to is our emergency manager app. It allows you to write down those important numbers that you might have to call. Uh, 911, you know, should be operational. It, it's all operational right now. You can call your county emergency manager if you, you know, if you feel like you, you've got a problem. Take a look at the hurricane guide. Uh, take a look at our website. There's, there's a number of things you can do to prepare yourself if you're staying at home. You know, have plenty of food and water for at least three days because you're going to be the help until help arrives if you, if you do not evacuate. And that's it's a life safety issue, and that's why the governor is urging everybody to leave. Again, basically saying people could be on their own. Yeah, th that's the fact of it is, is that you're going to have to be your own emergency manager until help arrives. So you're going to have to plan ahead, have food, water, 
uh, and be able to, uh, to, to exist. Do you know anything about sandbags? That was something asked. Sandbag locations here, the coast? There's, uh, if you contact your local uh, county emergency managers, uh, many of them have sandbags that you can come pick up or, you know, work through that. I know Dorchester County does, and I know others do as well. Speaking of uh, inland flooding, you mentioned the rivers in the current briefing. Is there any river basins in particular that you guys are looking at um, closely or yes, more closely than others uh, as the storm yes, approaches? The PD, and before Colonel Taylor, Taylor comes forward, there's some point that no one can go out in a hurricane. So even you could call 911 and call every other number, but just like you can't get out of your house to safety, they can't get in to save you. That's why we're urging people to leave from these evacuation uh, evacuation zones. Yes, about the rivers, please. Yes, sir. Um, the, the river basin of highest priority for us now is the PD basin. PD basin includes the Little PD and the Lumber River, which we saw problems with Nichols in the last flood event, along with the Waccamaw River, which, which um, impacts Conway, and the Black River, which impacts King Street, and all of those rivers flow into the PD Basin, which impacts Georgetown. So the river basin of our highest priority currently will be the PD Basin because it also receives a lot of um, flood water from the state of North Carolina. So not only will it have South Carolina affecting that river basin, it will also have the rainfall coming out of North Carolina. So it, it gets impacted two ways, which is, and it makes it our number one priority. Governor, the nuclear power facilities, what steps are being put in place to make sure that no issues happen? Those, those nuclear power facilities are covered with federal regulations and inspectors all the time, particularly now. Do, I know when we're talking about sending school buses down to help people with evacuation. Do we have any numbers on how many were sent down and other transportation means for people who may not be able to afford to leave? Kim Stennis. Stennis. Yeah, we've got, there's a couple of things. One is most of the school buses are used internally in the counties uh, to transport those people that do not have uh, transportation. And in some cases, some of the counties swapped assets back and forth to, to, to cross-level the load. And the other piece is that we've got uh, 125 commercial buses uh, that, we, that we have available. Uh, we've used at least 30 of them that I know to transport people. Uh, so they're available as we continue this operation. And do they just use that normal number to find or to coordinate yeah, that? They should, they should coordinate with or call their county emergency managers, and then they've got plans to have pickup points in different locations, and uh, a lot of this probably is in the local news media as well. Governor, I had a yes, question about uh, dam safety. We had heard about uh, inspections that have been done, but is there any um, concern about uh, dam safety or any plans, precautions? Be, being carefully watched. Mr. Wilson of D. Thank, thank you, Governor. Again, we would encourage all dam owners to take action with their dams to lower water levels, <coughs> make sure spillways work. Uh, to try to keep their dams and get their dams in as safe a condition as possible for the oncoming floods. Uh, we're, we're helping dam owners look at their dams. That's why we're going out in the field looking at all those dams that I mentioned earlier, the 181, so we can help those owners uh, take the, the actions they need. Yes, sir. Governor, um, obviously the stronger part of the storm is going to be in, in the low country and by the coast, but it's now forecast to also <coughs> reach the upstate by, by Monday. Um, can, can you talk to about folks up there and assure them that the state's going to have the resources and they won't be forgotten in this? The state will have the resources. As you've heard me say, we have the, the best team for this kind of thing as well as others of, of any, any place that, that we know of. Team South Carolina is strong, as you can tell, from the, the, just the, these representatives that are here. But <coughs> the facts will, return, will determine what we do. <coughs> we, know, excuse me, we know that the upstate's going to have a lot of rain. Uh, we, we know that. The question is just how much and, and, and what sort of precautions need to be taken. <clears throat> but what we ask everybody is stay tuned, go to the official sources, talk to the, the, the county offices as well as call these numbers that we've been uh, distributing and, and uh, publishing and stay alert because this is a dangerous storm that is unpredictable. If, if, you, uh, if you tune out for, for 12 hours, you might miss something very important. So stay tuned. And John Quayarello, would you like to answer the question, please, about the rainfall up in the upstate? Yes, sir. So 
Uh, we are expecting heavy rainfall. It's still kind of early to determine the exact, uh, exact locations and where we'll get the highest amounts. Right now, the greatest amounts look to be in the <coughs> northeast part of the state as they'll be closest to the hurricane as it stalls just offshore. Um, but a as the hurricane, as it weakens and moves across the state, we will see other areas with heavy rainfall. And it will also determine what areas see that significant flash flooding. In some ways, it's hard to relate it to the flood we had back in uh, during the Joaquin event back in 2015 because all the heavy rain fell in our very populated areas, Charleston, all the way up to Columbia. If this heavy rain sets up in other areas, it, it, it just all depends. So um, I think the key really is just know where you live. If you're in a flood prone location, be aware of that and move to a higher location. If you live along a river that could flood, you know, have, have a course of action to take to get to safety. You know, so right now, you know, most people don't have to evacuate due to rainfall, just need to get to a higher location away from floodwaters would be the best recommendation at this time. And in terms of the wind, again, it all depends how quickly the hurricane weakens off the coast, how long it sits there and, and how soon it moves inland. But we certainly could see tropical storm force winds well into the mid midlands, if not farther west than that. So it's something we'll continue to monitor, but expect at least some strong winds throughout the state, which could bring down bring down trees. Let me ask this, when would we expect flooding normally in the different parts of the state? Well, flooding could begin uh, earlier in the northeast part of the state as a hurricane approaches. The rain's going to begin probably late Thursday night, more so on Friday. We'll see those outer rain bands start coming in. Uh, and then the threat's going to spread west across the state. Uh, you know, even in the Midlands, the threat for heavy rain seems greatest late Saturday uh, through Sunday night. Uh, and then the upstate maybe a little bit after that. So like I was mentioning, it's going to be a long duration event. This isn't going to move through quickly. Um, so, uh, you know, just be aware of that and be prepared to uh, take action if there's, you know, flash flood warnings issued or you see water starting to rise. The I-26 lane reversal update for tomorrow, can you explain that again? Yes, yes sir. Uh, at uh, excuse me. 6 p.m. tomorrow, we will uh, close the uh, reverted sides. Again, that means that uh, if you're on the route uh, from the uh, I-526 area, uh, you can travel from uh, Charleston to Columbia. Uh, however, if you're not on the route at that time, uh, you would have to take the regular westbound, uh, westbound lanes of uh, I-26. So there will always be uh, lanes traveling from Charleston uh, to the uh, Columbia area. It just won't be the reverted lane at uh, 6 p.m. Still, you can't make it to Charleston on that route. Uh, you will not be able to make it to Charleston to Columbia on that route, on that route correct? From uh, Columbia. Charleston. That is correct, yes. And as we, and just one other thing, as we close the uh, ramps, uh, for example, uh, we start at the uh, I-526 interchange, say at the uh, Ashley Phosphate uh, 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 interchange. Once we've cleared that, vehicles can enter at that interchange and travel west, west I'm sorry, east to uh, Charleston. As we approach the US-78 interchange, once the troopers and the DOT officials clear that interchange, vehicles traveling, uh, vehicles can get on the uh, eastbound ramp and travel to the Charleston from that ramp. And we'll walk it up until we get to the I-77 interchange. And then they can travel that from I-77 in Columbia to Charleston on that, the regular lane. That is correct. In areas prone to flooding, should we expect road closures ahead of the storm? I'll get there. As part of the analysis that we're doing currently with the floodway studies, we will try to identify potential uh, trouble spots for the future, try to predict that in order to get ahead of the, the situation, make sure that we're ready to respond. If we predict that an area of roadway will overtop or a bridge will overtop, then we'll pre-position as best as we can to be able to quickly react to that. And where can people get the information in case they were wondering if they needed to evacuate last minute? Um, evacuation? Let's go to General, well, I, General they, they can get them on the road closures on your side. So the, the floodway study, we're still finishing that, so it's not quite ready um, to, to really uh, vet publicly, and uh, we're still doing the planning process of it. Certainly when we have road closures, the DOT will keep that up to date on our web page, and you can get to that same information, the South Carolina EMD site. I'll keep that number. We'll keep, can we put that number up again, please? Okay, John. Thank you, Governor. Uh, I want to emphasize to everyone, our success in the past has been Team South Carolina. And Team South Carolina, the most important member of the, the citizens of the state. It's not the, the group back here is a, are a bunch of professionals, and we will create an environment where people 
can be successful and safeguard their families. But it really takes people paying attention and listening to what the governor says, listen to the information that's being put out, uh, because this storm, again, is unpredictable. And uh, it is not 2015, it's not Matthew, it is Florence. And uh, it will change as time goes on. So just because you weren't flooded last time, you may be flooded this time. If you're in a low-lying area, you need to move out. Uh, when we start blocking off roads, you don't need to go around those blockades. And, and where we had problems last time is people not paying attention to what uh, the local authorities are saying or uh, the state <coughs> officials. So we ask everyone to listen to what's being said and, and apply it, please, because we are there to help, and we will help you up until the last minute. You know, finally, I'll be sure to get your information from official sources. A lot of times there's misinformation going around, and also I'd urge everybody not to take your own private secret shortcut that only you know about to go from <laughs> one road to another, because you might be the only one on there and might be stuck for the duration of the storm. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Um, I think this is for Mr. Parrish. Uh, we're hearing folks on Airbnb are offering their places for free. Any thoughts or recommendations on that? Any idea how many people are offering free places? No, I'm not sure how many are offering free places, but I would encourage everyone, whether your preference is short-term rental, such as Airbnb or HomeAway, whether your preference is a hotel, a state park cabin campground, or friends and relatives, just make that preparation in advance and make sure you do that um, either through the Internet or through telephone and do those things. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.